Today we're going to be going over the HTTP log from the set of Bro, Zeek, or Correlate logs. We'll be going over this log line by line, briefly explaining each field. Starting at the top of the timestamps, we're pretty familiar with these, it's just the time in which the log was recorded. UID and ID, however, are foundational Zeek log values. While seemingly simple, these are the fields that provide for quick and powerful cross-correlation between other Bro and Zeek logs. This is what allows you to take one connection or one protocol and see the big picture surrounding everything that occurred around that one event. Trans depth we will not see that much of. This pertains to HTTP pipelining, which was an early attempt at accelerating HTTP communications. Uh, what pipelining did was transfer more than one object per one request, but it never really saw full support with a lot of proxies, man in the middle devices, or even browsers. In fact, modern browsers have pulled support for this, for this option, so we won't be seeing much more of this one. For a lot of these upcoming fields, I'll be pulling from Wireshark, Splunk, and other sources just to help illustrate where you might have seen these fields before. Starting with method, most people are familiar with git and post. However, there are a large variety of methods available, and understanding what method is commonly associated with what values or certain activities can help illustrate what's going on with any one given HTTP transaction. Host and URI don't require much explanation. This is simply where the request is going and the resource being requested. Refer, however, gets slightly more interesting. As seen on the screen here, refer can contain the address, parts of the address, or depending on your refer policy, none of the address from the link that you were on prior to clicking on the link you're going to. Uh, this is really just used for tracking and comes with obvious privacy concerns. You can Google refer leaking for more information, and even in modern browsers, you can tweak and tune what a refer is allowed to send to the next website. User agent is somewhat self explanatory again. This is just the client. Uh, the only thing of note here is this can be everything from curl or wget, or down at the bottom here, you can see yum even showing up. Request body length and response body length. These are slightly more interesting than one might realize because all modern browsers and all modern web servers allow you to send gzip content, gzip being just you know derivation of zip. The reason that this can be important is that it's possible to take plain text data, highly, highly compress it, and exfil it from a network, whereas looking at these two values here, you can see the true size of the amount of data that's being moved. Most people will be familiar with status codes, at least your more common ones like 200 and 404s. Status messages, however, while most people believe they're familiar with them, do not realize that one numeric status code can have multiple ASCII text status messages associated with it. As seen here, 302 has a wide range of status messages that can be associated with it. Info codes and info messages, these will probably not be seen at all on most modern networks. You do have to remember that Zeek or Bro is 20 four plus years old at this point, and we'll be having small relics of prior era of HTTP. But these codes were traditionally used to say that a request was received and processing is occurring, or that a request was received and a switch of protocol, such as from one version of HTTP to another. However, that hasn't happened or been used in a long time. Tags are not from the actual HTTP traffic, and the respect this isn't coming from a header or a portion of the traffic. Uh, tags are being added by the sim, a Zeek script, or some external source. Uh, this is useful for sorting various types of traffic for various destinations for classification and filtering. Username and passwords will not show up that often. Uh, plain text authentication is really not that commonplace anymore. If you did want to invoke this just for the sake of testing, you could do so as seen on the screen with an Apache HT access file. Uh, the only other way I could possibly imagine that this would be visible would be if you were sending decrypted traffic to the defiance, but generally speaking, it'll be very rare to find this in plain text. If there is a proxy being used within your enterprise, there are headers that are almost always inserted to identify who is using the proxy. You would want this for obvious reasons. The origin and response FUIDs and file names. This indicates the direction in which a file is being moved, whether it's being uploaded or downloaded, and the FUID is directly correlatable to, to our files.log. Likewise, there are other logs that you can use to cross-correlate, and this is very handy for event correlation and threat hunting. MIME types. This is synonymous with media type, and the list is quite long. You're going to be better off searching this one on your own, but any HTTP connection should be identifying what it's trying to move. 
And if this is anomalously paired with other forms of data, that in itself could be a smoking gun for a threat incident response. Client header names and server header names. If you look throughout the available fields in the HTTP log, a lot of these are extracted on their own, and likewise it's possible to write Zeek scripts to extract one on their own. But for any client header or server header that does not have its own dedicated field, they're all going to be listed here, and this can be useful for searching for something that you, that's not already predefined as an extracted value. Cookie vars and URI vars. I cannot show this here in, in conjunction with Corelight because this is not a predefined package on a Corelight sensor. This is available in the open source, but in order to do this on the Corelight sensor, you would have to write your own bundle. It's mentioned here in the fine print that the policies, protocols, uh, header names, and var extraction URI, if they're loaded, these are available. So out of the box, these are not turned on.